Hi, I'm Ginny Renahan from the Gloucester Area Astronomy Club, and I'm here to give you the heads up about the upcoming Lyrid Meteor Shower, which will take place, the peak will be April 23rd, the morning of, uh, and it should be a great year for the, for the shower because the moon, the waxing crescent moon will set early and we'll have nice dark skies, no, uh, no moon light pollution. So it won't wash out the sky. Like other meteor showers, the Lyrids is an annual event and it, it occurs sometime between the 16th and the 25th each year and during the peak you can expect to see between 10 and 20 meteors per hour. Sometimes you can see even more than that. The Lyrids are actually known for being a little unpredictable, sometimes 100 meteors per hour. The other thing that's really beautiful about the Lyrids is uh, they leave, they tend to leave a beautiful uh, ion streak. About a quarter of them exhibit this persistent trail or a tail and uh, it, it glows for a few seconds and it, and it really is a beautiful event to see. So what is a meteor shower anyway and how does, where does it come from and, and how is it that we see it at the same time of year every year? Well, meteor showers are typically come from comets. They're the dusty, dirty guts of comets. And, and, a, and a comet is basically a dirty snowball that comes from the outer reaches of our solar system. The long period comets come from the, Kuiper uh, the Oort cloud and the short period comets come from the Kuiper belt. And as they race in towards the sun in their orbital path around the sun, they in effect melt. And a comet is a dirty, a dirty snowball, and when it melts, it leaves be behind uh, debris in its orbital path. And each year, the Earth passes through that debris trail, and we interact with the debris from, from the comet, uh, from the par parent comet. Um, and if the Earth passes through an unusually thick clump of cometary debris, we'll see one of these you know, fabulous uh, events where we see 100, 100 meteors an hour. Rare, but, but it happens. The comet that produced this particular meteor shower is Comet Thatcher. It's also called C1861 G1. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a comet that um, last appeared in 1861, and it has a 415-year orbital period around the sun. So the next time it will be back our way is uh, in 2276. So where in the sky to look to see this event? Well, every comet has, uh, its name is derived from the constellation in which it appears to radiate. Um, we call it the radi radiant point. And in this case, the Lyrids seem to come from the constellation Lyra. And it's an easy thing to find because Lyra is, uh, has a, a very bright star, one of the brightest stars in the sky, called Vega. And Vega is easy to find. So you don't need to know Vega or the constellation Lyra to find the radiant point. You just need to, you can use an app or a sky map. Um, you just need to know a little bit about when to look, and in this case, anywhere between the 20th and the 23rd. The 23rd should be the peak. And the radiant point is almost irrelevant. Vega will tend to rise in the east, in the northeast, somewhere around 10 o'clock for us here in the eastern, in the northeastern hemisphere. And over the course of the night, Vega will get higher and higher in the sky and you'll see more and more uh, meteors in every direction. The best place to view around Cape Ann would be the beach or an open field. Uh, good Harbor Beach has an especially good view of the northeast, so you can see Vega rising. You know, obviously you want to look any time from 10 o'clock when Vega starts to rise, 10 p.m., to after midnight and then just before dawn when Vega and the constellation Lyra are, are well overhead. You don't need a telescope, no fancy equipment. In fact, it's best not to, just to use your naked eye. No telescopes or binoculars needed. And dress warmly. Spring nights tend to be really cold. Bring a blanket. Um, friends are always helpful. 
And that's really it. We're moving into meteor season now and look for your cable TV station to post all of the meteor showers that will be coming up in, in the coming months, in particular the August Geminids. And in closing, if you're interested in this or any other celestial or astronomy happening, take a look at the, uh, you know, you can find us on the web, on Twitter. We have a Facebook presence. Uh, we meet the second Friday of every month uh, at the Lanesville Community Center, and we have a speaker, um, decaf coffee, good snacks, brownies. The brownie lady is fabulous, and uh, it's free and open to the public. We're kid-friendly, and we'd love to see you.